With Sega leaving the console market with the death of the Dreamcast, a lot of Sega franchises have gone into indefinite hibernation. With extreme exceptions, Sega is content to let these franchises fade into obscurity and only bring them out when they need to fill a spot in their kart racing games. So we'll likely never see a return of Space Channel 5, Crazy Taxi, Knights or Burning Rangers. But hey, those were all games that appeared relatively recently. What about franchises that came out when 3D gaming was a long distant dream? Games like Alice Kidd, Echo the Dolphin, and the subject of today's video, The Bonanza Brothers. Bonanza Brothers is a two-player cooperative side-scrolling game for the Sega Mega Drive, or the Genesis in countries that are wrong. In it, you play as two would-be criminals as you explore a stage collecting loot and avoiding enemies before making your escape. The game uses a split-screen system, which I thought was interesting because typically in two-player cooperative games, both players were limited to the same screen. However, in Bonanza Brothers, the players are freely able to split up and tackle different objectives. But swerve! I'm not here to talk about Bonanza Brothers, I'm instead here to talk about the series of spin-off games. Yes, there were indeed Bonanza Brothers spin-offs, three of them in fact, but the only one that ever saw a Western release was the third in the series, and even then it was only in arcades. The series referred to as Puzzle and Action is a collection of vastly different minigames that players cooperatively compete in. Think of the Point Blank series, but instead of using a light gun, you're using a controller which isn't really that great of a comparison anyway. As I mentioned earlier, this is a cooperative game. Sure, you're technically playing against your teammate, but victory only grants you the ability to pick a minigame from a roulette. However, if you lose a minigame, in which I mean make a mistake, you could lose a precious heart. You get three hearts per life, and if you run out, tough luck, and you have to watch your friend play the game on their own. There's not much of a structure to the game outside of completing the minigames. So there's a story of source and kind of sees a role reversal as the Bonanza Brothers are now detectives chasing criminals. So you chase a big bad guy and beat up his minions by playing minigames. The only thing that changes is the location and the minions. The minigames are random each time and vary in difficulty. At the end of each minion battle, when you move to the next area, you are presented with a bonus game in order to restock upon hearts. Each minigame is fairly straightforward, so you should be able to figure them out even if you can't read Moon, but I'll run you through a few of my favourites. Change is where you are presented with an image which gets modelled up and you have to piece it back together, like a jigsaw puzzle. Honestly not that exciting, but it has some really cool pictures. Camera Shock is a reaction-based game where you take the role of a photographer. A fast object will fly by and it's up to you to get all of it in frame when you take a picture. This is actually an incredibly brutal game as each mistake you make costs a heart. If you have poor reactions, this game can wipe out all your lives. Block and Dower is a math shape game. A bunch of shapes is displayed at the bottom and an equation is presented. So you can answer the age old question of triangle plus square equals half an eaten pizza. Slot search is kind of like a word search except with slot machine pictures. If you're the competitive type, it gets really intense as you quickly scan all images like Rain Man. Bakaraka Robotu allows you to live your fantasy as an underpaid Chinese child building Gundams. Make the robots faster, else it's the whip for your sweet Chinese behind. There are a bunch of other mini games I left out because I don't want to spoil the entire game. The sequel to Puzzle in Action was only ever released in Japan, which is a shame, as this is everything a sequel should be. Taking the prior game and expanding on it, it includes all new minigames, a return of the main mode from the original game, but also an adventure-like mode, as well as a four-player mode. This game was one of the few that used the Mega Drive's multi-tap, allowing up to four players at a time, and all minigames are supported. In the four-player mode, it's a race to the finish, roll a die determining where you land, and you all face off in that minigame. The winner of the minigame gets to roll next. You keep going until one of you reaches the end where that person enters a boss battle with a dragon. If you win, congrats, you beat the mode. If you lose, however, you are sent back a couple of spaces, allowing others to catch up. The minigames have no difficulty curve, and the same minigame can either be a doddle or the hardest thing you will ever do. I thought it was 20. Oh, oh god. Shit. Whoa. Oh, I'm already fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going with 24. 
And now in the four player mode, instead of losing lives, you have points and you can actually go into negatives, meaning if you get the lowest score of negative three, you need six straight wins in order to win. And in games that are too hard for my western brain, that is quite a task. Me and my friends got stuck for 15 minutes on this memory game because we could not, for the life of us, remember more than five things. Unfortunately, the sequel does not have the original minigames return. Instead, the new minigames are more expanded on versions of their predecessors' counterparts. This game also has a greater variety in minigames, as most of the minigames from the first game were either a reaction-based game, a memory game, or a math game. Here we have stuff like, collect all the apples as a hummingbird whilst avoiding the flying squirrels, and be the first to make it back to your nest. In UFO, you shoot down UFOs faster than your opponents while a loop of the Daytona theme plays. Warp is similar to a minigame in the first puzzle in action, however where that one was unfair because you had no time to get to the exit, or see what route you needed to take, this time it's much better designed as you can predict where the warp pads will deliver you. Looking Sharp has you alternating two buttons to sharpen the pencil fastest. I love button mashing games as it's the only thing I seem to be good at, so I support any and all minigames that are mindless button mashing. Rocket Power is similar to the robot game, but instead you are building a rocket. The segments have all these different connectors and are colour-coded, and if you like to game the system, start your rocket from the bottom, and then just copy your friends. I don't think I don't know what you're doing, Mitch. Frogalog is a puzzle game where you need to stack the gold frogs, biggest to smallest, on the yellow pad. I think I just like this one because I'm the only one who's good at it. And finally, there is a minigame that will just end your game. If you accidentally pick this one, then you may as well reset the game, because unless you can read Moon, you won't win. The way it works is clues scroll at the bottom of the screen and describe a shape, a colour, and a size of a coffin. Get the right one, and you win. Simple, if you could read the clues. I like the second a lot more compared to the first, but the two have their pros and cons. I do like some of the minigames in the first, but the inclusion of more modes as well as four player matches tips me a little towards the sequel. They are both tremendous fun, so getting either is a treat. And finally, the third game in the series was released on the Sega Saturn and arcades, and I haven't played it. But hey, if you and your friends are tired of playing Smash Brothers, Mario Kart when you have your little gaming parties, please invite me. Get up out of that armchair, throw that Wii U out the window, and break out that Mega Drive and show them what blast processing is all about.